Lindman Co Credit Union. Thank you guys. And also, thank you, American Legion, for hosting us every single month. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate the space. <laughs> if there's anybody new, I invite you to stand up and just introduce yourself and where you're from. Good afternoon, everybody. Again, uh, Frank, Northbrook Church. I've been, uh, had the honor of been, uh, working on the chamber for the past year as uh, your acting president. So let's see, we are going to today, here's the agenda, kind of discuss the past, present, and future of our North Bend Chamber. Today is the State of the Chamber Address. And then uh, talk about membership pricing, because I know a lot of you are coming to this room, I want the floor food. But I want to know about membership pricing. I'm excited about that. So you're welcome. We'll have that later today. So we want to talk about what's been happening. So six months ago, here's where we were. I stood up before you just saying, hey, here's the deal. We have come on this new board. And uh, we, we have some issues we identified. We want to communicate them very clearly to the membership of the chamber. And so uh, where we were six months ago, uh, at that time when I spoke, we were six weeks from being broke. And I don't mean uh, broken, just not feeling well. No, we were broke. I mean, we were out of money. Uh, we were six weeks away from doing that. We, uh, our expenses at that time, it was hard to get a handle on it. But we, as we identified and figured things out, we realized, well, we're, we're just spending more than we're taking in. we got to fix this and fix it now. Uh, and at that time, we also had no staff to do all this, <laughs> to catch up and figure out all the problems. So it was all a volunteer staff. Most of the board was new and came on. Uh, 2023, and then uh, we really had no executive director or any staff, so to speak, and we had this big problem, a big issue to deal with, and that, that was our presentation back in May. We said our plan at that point is, as we got together, and I'll, and I'll be candid with you, our discussion at that time was, first of all, listen, is this worth the fight? There's going to be a lot of work. We're all volunteers. We didn't sign up for this when we decided to be part of the chamber. Are we going to do what it takes to get this done, and who's, who's, win it, who's in this. And to the credit of all the people on the board, they all stuck with it and said, let's, get, let's do this. This is important enough, we believe in it. Let's do what we can to make this happen. So a bunch of volunteers who already have full-time employment 
we said we decided here's our three things back to May we presented. One is we have to get financially healthy. We have to figure out where we're at. We got six weeks ago, we cannot continue this same process. Let's get financially healthy, do whatever it takes to get there. Our second goal is that this is still a service organization. We want to support our businesses. This is us. This is North Branch. This is very important to us and the region. We said we still want to continue as best we can with what little resources financially and time-wise we have. We want to do the best we can to serve our members. And the third is we, we saw the importance, maybe this is one of the most important. So the short term is obviously one and two. Long term was number three. We said we just can't do things the way we've always done for the last couple decades. The way we've done it, we got, we got to look at it differently and be willing to do, be creative and, and go with wherever we, Wherever it takes us, but we have to reimagine and re envision the direction of the Chamber of Commerce. And that's what we decided and committed to you that that will be our priority as a chamber. Here's kind of a re progress report six months later from our discussion back in May. One, you know, hey, I don't want to minimize this. Some of you are going, so what? <laughs> we have money in the bank. No, did I mention we are six weeks away? We had no money in the bank. So the fact that we have a surplus, and we actually have, there's something there, and I'm not panicking here today, that's a good thing. So thank you to all those who made that happen. We have, we do have, a, we have funds in the bank. We are operating the blank, uh, the blank. <laughs> we were in the blank, now we're in the black. <laughs> Which is, uh, it's hard to explain how much time this took from a lot of volunteers, a lot of people to figure out Okay, where's our bills? How do we get this organized? There's a lot of rabbit trails to follow, but we kind of understand what our expenses are, got to organize, and we have a, a basically a working operation to the point where we're just, uh, I believe last month we began paying a little small stipend to Melissa for her services uh, for part-time work at the Chamber of Commerce to serve in her position. So we were able to finally get to the point from no staff to actually having money and having a little bit of a staff. And I don't mean to say Melissa, you're a little bit. I just need to say the time we're paying for. You're doing a great job. Our second part was to continue serving the members in spite of our limitations where our actors we feel that was important. We continued every major event. We had luncheons consistently. We had major events to golf tournament, which was for those who were there, it was a success. It was just a great day. So thanks to the people who made that happen. Uh, we had a great day at the golf trip, and then the Fall Harvest Festival went on as usual and had another great event for that. So we were able to contain those uh, important events that were part of the chamber. We are able to maintain contact with members as best we can. So Melissa, she would answer the phone on her days off, and she would answer emails and keep on contacting people. And we did as much as possible to make it, make it as seamless and painless as possible that people still felt connected with. That was important to us. And the third, this is hard, this is important. That We've increased actually our souls. Not only do we maintain and survive, we've actually increased and done better. Again, 100% volunteers. We've done better in, in hopefully continuing to serve our members. Which leads us to number three. Our third important goal. We figure we feel like we hit number one. We've made, hap, made number two happen. Number three is to reimagine, re-envision the board went through it, a visioning process back in August, multiple follow-up meetings, multiple conversations, and we kind of we said, we said, here are our values, here are the things that guide us, how we operate, and how we want to be as people and as an organization. We also, last month at the October luncheon, we received a lot of member input, and that will come up in a little bit later. We said we, we want to have this information as we move forward together as a chamber. And that's the end of my part. Uh, I just need to say on a personal note that I do have some people to thank. Uh, there are some things that happened. As I said, we were wondering, is this worth the fight? And uh, if you're here for that luncheon back in May, you remember uh, uh, Anderson Coke for Bill Bill Young stood up and they donated uh, $15,000 so we can keep the office. Uh, the money itself was fantastic, but I tell you what, it was a, a morale shot in the arm for us. We said, you know what, we're not in this alone. And a number of people have stood up and helped out. I think of uh, Mike and Cola, who helped out there in the golf tournament. Things like that said, you know what? It would have been easy to say no, but when people are invested, it's like, how can we not give our best to make this happen too? And so thank you to people like that 
people like you who stood up and helped out and jumped in like that. It's easy to say the words, isn't it? But it, it really means a lot of people actually do the deeds. And the second part of that is that um, I can't stress this enough that Melissa was volunteered. I know she, it, this wasn't planned, and she didn't <laughs> acknowledge us. But she volunteered from May to now, to October. I, I can't put it more plain with that. We don't have a chamber because she doesn't volunteer her time. So let's So thank you, and I want to make sure if you have if you have gift coupons, <laughs> you have anything way to thank her in a very personal, tangible way. Uh, visit her place, put on some fluffy thing, and take some pictures. <laughs> and uh, but we want to thank her very much. So thank you, Melissa. I, I, we do appreciate. It. And the chamber, we have a future now going forward, thanks to some dedicated people, and, and we us also, and the board also who. Again, volunteered, committed to make this happen. And uh, I'm proud to say that was our past. And the fact that we actually have more of a presentation means we actually have a future going forward. And Jason will take us through the next step. I just want to acknowledge Journey, too. Journey is our volunteer intern. Mm -hmm. And for every hour that Journey is at the office with me, it's a, another hour that I have to put towards something else, too. So I'm just going to piggyback on Craig. And I just want to thank Journey for being there with us. Still on, right? So I get the usually I'm saying up here talking about what people want from community and what is reality and what will actually come into a community. So I get the task of talking about kind of what we heard from the members and what the board had talked about. So if you remember back in May after the May meeting, the board got together and had a conversation about you know kind of a visioning process, what's next, and really had conversations about what are the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And I know the SWOT analysis that the board did, did was presented a few months ago just to kind of give you an update of where things were at. And so from that, we used that information to sort of inform what we did at the October luncheon, which was really to get the input from the members in terms of, I would say, really what's important. So what we're trying to do is, one, I'm going to kind of go through some of those items, but two, what we're trying to get to a point where we have some aspect of a strategic plan that will help inform future decisions, future boards make, future things and activities and different events and other things that the chamber does as a whole, whether that's a chamber broad thing within the community or member services, and also at the end of the day, really how that informs the budget, what things cost, and what we need from membership fees and dues and things like that at the same time. So I think a lot of effort really went into figuring out sort of some of these things and take that information. So we're continuing to take what I would call sort of baby steps along the way we don't have a strategic plan in place yet, but this information that we have here is going to be the catalyst to basically inform that. So you'll get to know me. I'm a very visual person, so I like to use images to represent sort of what I hear things and what people have talked about. So the, one of the first things, one of the highest things that came out of the discussion was strong networks. That the strong network between sort of members and members, businesses, the business, uh, members and businesses to the community, the community back to the chamber, those sorts of things. So really that we're all part of something bigger. We're not just, in the, we might be individual businesses or organizations within the chamber, within the community, but we're all part of something bigger, which ultimately is that community aspect. So a few of the things that came out was maintaining those networks, those connection opportunities, luncheons like this, different business to business opportunities that might exist out there, such as the Christmas thing that, that's coming up, the tree lighting ceremony, and how we can play also those networks within the community itself. So are there things that we can create a shared list of businesses? Maybe it's by category, so you can, so businesses can get access to that. Maybe there's opportunities that you can find that you can network with other businesses, whether it's goods or services or production on different things. Uh, you know, focus on that member, member business, business connections, promote members, member organizations, and all community-based businesses. One of the things we heard was, regardless if you're a member or not, part of the chamber's focus should be promoting all business within the community, not just those that are members. Obviously, we're providing services to members, but we're all part of, again, that bigger, that something that's bigger, ultimately. Um, delivering valuable, so making sure that the, t the chamber is a tangible business investment. So are there ways that we can help initiate uh, business partnership opportunities, whether that's connecting a business to the school district, to the Viking Bridge program, uh, hosting member, member, and business to business events. So there are opportunities that we can have, maybe some of those more intimate sort of get-togethers 
that are specific for members to be able to get to know each other or just have a good time with each other. Same thing with the, with the businesses. And really for the chamber to be a conduit of information and advertise job openings. Is there a way that we can help businesses say, hey, I'm looking for workers. Um, can we put that out there so that the community can access that? Um, or are there other opportunities that maybe businesses can come together to sort of help fill some of those needs and gaps? Um, this was a big one, which was really plan the programming that enhances business learning. But these are great to come together too, but are there ways that we can provide educational opportunities um, that the businesses can learn new things, innovative things, just hear from others that can help you maybe connect with other people to maybe help improve some different business aspects, uh, operations, uh, aspects of your business operations. Um, and then leverage member interest and expertise to help grow member involvement. So one of the biggest things we, the board talked about is the opportunities that we might have to sort of grow membership. At some point, I think we had close to 300 members, we're roughly about 150 right now. Are there ways that we can work together to bring in more people so that we can help people sort of connect, like, oh, this person's a member, I should be a member as well. You know, whether they're existing members, members outside the community, inside the community, how we leverage some of those different interests and, and expertise to really grow that membership. And that also goes to different events. So the golf classic, are there things that maybe you're an avid golfer, but your business has nothing to do with golfing, but you want to participate. Some of the things we did here was, you know, I'm, I'm interested in being involved. I can't afford to sponsor, but I want to be involved with that. And one of the things we talked about is the need for more involvement from members, not that, not necessarily monetarily, to really, but really help do some of the events that everybody talks about that are important. Uh, shine spotlights, shine spotlights. So sort of community presence, allow members to self-promote, give them opportunities. So we've got that sort of net, that mem members only Facebook page. <coughs> How do we showcase business stories and successes? That was an item that came up about how businesses can promote themselves and share some of the successes so that we all can share in the success of the business in North Branch. Uh, really promote what's going on in the community. So again, it's this aspect of not just internal, but how we as a chamber connect to the community and how businesses can connect to the community and how we can bring awareness to the chamber and members and all the businesses, <laughs> again, from a community perspective so that they can see that the chamber is important, that the chamber matters, that we are all part you know, the businesses. We have all these different businesses in the community that people can take advantage of um, from a customer standpoint. And then create business to business collaborations and problem solving opportunities. So again, networking lunches, are there other opportunities that we can bring people together um, to sort of work out, you know, maybe if you're a business owner and you're having some struggles, are there other people that you can connect to that might be able to assist you with some of the different things that you have going on? Uh, and lastly, which is really connect the community. Again, I talked a lot about this, but again, that aspect of bridging the business community and the community as, as a whole together. You know, making the chamber matter, being a conduit for the relationships between the business community and the community and the residents that live, in, live here in town. Assist business with the promotions to help entice shopping locally. Uh, build that business local support for small business to strengthen the community. Um, and then, you know, really to increase the chamber and business engagement and visibility in the community, but also amongst our members within some of the different events that we have. You know, there's that adage that we're, you know, we're all good together, we're stronger by having more people involved. So the more that we have involved, the, the easier it is on the board to not have to do everything. The more ideas that we have, I think just the stronger presence that we have met out into the community, and hopefully we get the reverse back from the community in terms of support for local business as well. So these are some of the things, again, all of these different things can fit under any one of these different umbrellas that are up here. But this was kind of what we heard put together to be able to share to say, this is what we heard you say. This is some of the focus the board really wants to put an emphasis on, emphasis on going forward uh, to make sure that we're sort of hearing what you're saying and having some action plans as a result of that uh, going forward. So if I rewind back to the, the SWOT analysis that we did. So some of the strengths were what, you know, what favors us, the board has been very committed uh, during this time to really wanting to have that reimagined and re-envisioned chamber that is what the members want, what the community deserves or needs. Um, you know, there's that untapped growth potential in terms of more members that are out there that aren't members right now, so how can we bring some back into membership? How can we identify those that are moving into the community and get them to become members? Um, and what is the member interest and involvement? How can we increase that and enhance that overall? What are the areas that you as members have interest in that you maybe want to participate in, whether it's financially or not? So how do we 
reach out to make sure that I have an interest in Fall Harvest Festival or the Spring Expo, whether it's being a vendor or just being a volunteer or helping out with some of the different events like the luncheon and planning and coordinating some of these. Um, how do we do that? Some of the things that potentially hold us back is again, we do need help. Uh, there is a need for support, you know, just from a people power aspect. You know, the lack of qualified staff and the lack of funding. So ultimately, we got into the situation because we just we didn't have enough funding. Our members were dropping. We didn't have enough members to support the cost of doing some of these things. So the decisions were made to ultimately let go of the staff um, that really are needed to help deliver and push through some of the things that are that are asked by the members. And Clint is going to talk about that here a little bit more in a minute. Opportunities before us, new direction, vision, and clarity. The hope is that some of this information is providing clarity in terms of what we've heard. Does this fit with what everybody ideas everybody has? Um, I've noticed, others have noticed sort of this re-energy uh, from the members themselves. Um, a lot of people seem to be like, what else can we do? How can we help? You know, what is the chamber doing? And I would say that that October luncheon discussion that we had was very lively. People were not afraid to share thoughts and ideas of how they think the chamber can deliver and ways that they can even help deliver on some of those things. Uh, and financial transparency. One of the things that the board has really been committed to is making sure that we are very open in terms of what does it cost to put on what we do? What does it cost to do events? You know, what are the needs when it comes to, hey, we had to make a decision about membership fees, and here's the why from some aspects. <coughs> and the threats is, the biggest one really is inflexibility and opaqueness. Not being flexible and willing to adapt, not being transparent. Um, you know, if, I would say that if we lose more members beyond the 150, that's really gonna put a hurt on some of the minimum things that we ultimately wanna do, uh, ultimately to the point that it could jeopardize the chamber really going forward. And I believe, from my perspective as community development director for the city, having a chamber uh, in a community like North Branch and a strong chamber is very important and critical for my ability to help bring business to town. So I think from that aspect, having a good chamber with all the partnerships between businesses and having that large presence, um, I think is critically important. We were just at a mid-car expo of uh, all sorts of realtors and real estate brokers and developers and our focus to go there was basically just awareness, an awareness campaign to say, hey, North Branch, we're here, we're ready, and here's what we have to offer business coming to town. And so that aspect is, you know, we're just really trying to focus on that element of that, to really get our word out there of who we are. So the stronger we have a presence out there, the more ability we'll have to be able to bring business into the community. And, you know, again, there is going to be a need for staff. I mean, again, Melissa's done a great job. Um, it's been on top of everything that we've had out there. Um, but I think at some point, the board has had the conversation that we're probably gonna need to have a full-time staff person to really help drive some of the things that we want to really make the chamber sustainable and strong over time, as well as the need for volunteers going forward. So, before I turn it over to Clint, one of the things that I was asked to do was just sort of lay out what does the 2024 chamber budget look like? So this is kind of a draft. This is something we're more than happy to share with anybody that's out there. We're just kind of breaking it down in terms of what are the revenues. So we've got memberships, sponsorships, member services, and chamber events. So the chamber events are the Golf Classic, the Spring Expo, the Fall Harvest Festival. Those are the three main ones. So we make, projected to make about 95,000 between all those events. You can see our operating um, expenditures. So personnel would be providing a stipend to a part-time um, executive director, which is what Melissa's been doing for us. And if we ultimately get to the need of having somebody more full-time, obviously that number has to go up from that standpoint. You know, leases would be the existing space that we're in, any equipment that we have. So we have about $57,000 right now in just pure expenses, just to run the chamber. That's what they look like without a full-time staff person. And then you get into the, the bottom aspect of what does it cost to put on the Spring Expo, the Golf Classic, the Fall Harvest Festival. And obviously those are fundraisers for the chamber, so it's not in cash in, cash out. But just to give you an idea that, you know, if all things stay this way right now, we're projected to have, you know, the possibility of an over, you know, have a positive balance at the end of the year based on memberships, based on what the, what the board has looked at for that perspective. Um, so again, attempt to be transparent. This is the reality of what we're working with and what we're trying to accomplish and do all the things that the members would like to see done as a result of that. So um, with that, I'll turn it over to Clint to talk about sort of the future. 
steps from here. Thanks, sir. Um, I don't know if you want to, uh, I'll stay here. Next can turn the other way. <laughs> I, long time teacher, long time coach. I got a coach's voice. I can project. Uh, I'll get that part done. Uh, but this, we, we're business people here. We all live in budgets. In your house, you live in budgets. Schools, we live in budgets. We have budgets. We have to stay in touch with So I really want, th this is a key part here. This is if nothing goes wrong. No changes, no nothing. This is tight. Um, and what we're doing, and I, I'll just be honest with you. First, I should probably comment. You know, I'm, this is my second year uh, here at North Branch. Well, I, this, is, this is my style of town. It really is. And this, what we're talking about, is what this kind of town needs. This is, that's why I'm attracted and giving the effort that I'm giving in this is to make this a vibrant community to be proud of. Um, this, you know, we're working with pros, by the way. The people on this board, Pros and they're giving energy. And Frank is exactly right. When you see that people care, you just get more energy to put into that. And when you got people who have abilities to carry out those, that's even better. But I'm going to be honest, it's not sustainable the way we're doing it right now because a lot of us have day jobs. Actually, all of us have day jobs uh, that need our energy as well uh, for, for that part. So, this is what I'm going to describe our future here kind of. Uh, Slow roll, and then what a, a fast roll can kind of look like, potentially in the future if you want to click ahead uh, here. <coughs> so uh, everyone is presented right now is, is totally right. This is an opportunity. And for business mindset people, you see opportunities all the time. You're looking for that moment, something, a lever to pull that changes the direction of your organization. We're there right now. Okay, the last six months, that's what it was. We had a crisis happen. We had to address it. And now we went back, and now we can redesign uh, what can be. Uh, but when our current si situation, it really is going to be a slow roll to get to where that future is going to be because of our budget constraints uh, that, that we're going to have right now. The easiest way to sustainably go forward is memberships. And you heard uh, Jason talk about the opportunities there. We had 300 members at some point. The, the, those people are still here. They're out there. We just gotta connect with them so that they see value in what this group is and what this group can be. And that's when we get those numbers up, we get that 200 range, we get that 250 range. Now we're talking about sustainable stuff, but if we're only grabbing 10, 15, 20 members a year, more, every, that's gonna be a slow roll to get us to where we're gonna need to be or want to be uh, in, in our current uh, scenario. That's where we are now. That, that is our reality. We gotta live inside of what we are now. And so when people are asking uh, about how we can help, volunteerism, um, influx of cash somehow, some way, uh, that those are things that we're open to to really start getting creative in what this chamber uh, can be. That fast track model here uh, is, is that. If we have that influx of cash, we get a huge jump in membership we can really start getting creative now, uh, moving forward. And the ED, more than likely, for the executive director, is more than likely the best route for us to go, because that person carries the vision. They give us the vision, they give us the energy, and then the board can carry out and execute those things. That's, that's what we all signed up for, that's what we want to do. But we gotta have that person who has that, and then does the work that Melissa is working so hard right now, uh, trying to, to do, but that's, that's a full-time gig, and we aren't any more than just one person uh, to do this. Because this community needs this. This community wants it. You hear from the city that the city needs a strong chamber. The school district needs a strong community, uh, a business partner. We're growing. There's 600 homes going up in this area. People are moving here. Okay, our school district's going up. We're we're increasing new families all the time. This is this is a worthy investment. Uh, to make as a business owner uh, in, in, this, in this space. Okay, we flip the next slide here. Really to our discussions and talking about what is the role of the chamber, what can we do? And it's really trying to create spaces. Spaces for this community, okay? Spaces to gather, spaces to connect, spaces to publicize your, your business, to connect with others. Because in a town like this, there's not many events. I mean, we can talk about churches, we can talk about school events, we can talk about other places that we're gathering uh, together, 
But those aren't necessarily business spaces uh, to be talking about. So the chamber can be that space and should be that space where we're creating those spaces. And then it's up to whoever's organizing the event to design the event that's best for businesses. Okay, and so if we're talking about the golf outing, that's a gathering event. It's a social event that we're getting to. Is there other kind of social events that we can gather where you can bring your staff perhaps and celebrate some of your staff at events uh, that rewards your staff for all the hard work that they do for you and your organization. Where do we have that in this, in this space? So we, we're, we're open to that. We want to create those spaces. We have online spaces that we can create things, and we're doing a pretty good job there, but we get a little bit better with social media. I mean, we just had the fort come in here and give us, oh my God, that was an unbelievable lunch there. We've got to publicize them and get them the, the business that they deserve for doing what they just did for us there, and that gets the word out. So creating this space, luncheon, this is a space uh, for us to gather. Uh, now I get it, not all small businesses have the opportunity to get out for an hour every uh, once a month to come up and have this luncheon. But if this is a space where they get value from it, the networking side, the social side um, of this, then you probably will find space and time to bring it. You might bring other staff, you might be guests uh, to, to a luncheon like this, okay? So there's lots of opportunities for us as a board and, and, and wherever our future looks like to create these spaces so that we can glorify what we got going on here in North Branch and help propel your business forward, but all of us are better together. Okay, and that's, that's that mentality and the idea uh, behind that. Okay, storefront was came real clear right away. Like when we went into crisis mode, it's like, we can't afford rent. It's not even a possibility. We were gonna go virtual we're gonna go online. Uh, that's possible, but it was immediate that this group wanted the storefront. So we'll keep the storefront, okay, as long as we can. But that's, it's in the budget uh, piece of it. But where can we can move that even further now uh, and help and promote business uh, of being that central hub uh, that works in partner with the city then too with all of the new people coming to town and how they're gonna find your businesses uh, that you have uh, for, for our community members, especially our new people uh, that, are, that are moving to town. So that's our future, but we don't know if the future is going to be the slow roll Couple of members a year. Uh, we'll maintain our budget. Hopefully, Melissa doesn't die on us. Sorry, Melissa, I don't know that <laughs> But that kind of mentality, we don't have this huge budget expense that comes in that's going to suck away our budget uh, that, that we currently have uh, there. Or is there going to be more of a fast roll where we see a tick, a huge tick, like 40, 50 memberships that are going to go up uh, in, in our, our membership that gives us that influx of cash that's going to allow us. Uh, to move forward with that vision. Uh, that person, that ED, or that someone who's going to be that more of that full time to take this on of what we've been doing over the last six months uh, with, with the chamber. So, there it is. There's the future. What could maybe be, or what is um, right now? So, that's the last slide, I believe. So, and then, I say before we go to questions, I think one of the things <coughs> to jump back is so, what does all this mean from a pricing standpoint? So, and I apologize, I don't have a slide up here for it, but one of the things the board looked at was, one, what does it cost to operate? If we didn't have the events, or the events that we have planned don't net out to what we think that they historically do, between the revenues of sponsorships and vendors at booths and things like that, and the cost to put them on, what does it cost just to operate? So one of the things that we took a look at was, trying to be mindful, we talked about a variety of different strategies tied to memberships from you know, small business to large business and different sort of pricing. We you know we looked at the sponsorship aspect and historically we've also looked at trade. So if you have a business that can provide a service that can help the chamber perform some of its functions, you know, there are some things that we're all still willing to sort of look at from that standpoint. But from a basic member perspective, we decided to keep the membership basically a price with an option. So the price for 2024 went from 295 to $395. But we also have the option for $445. You can also get your membership plus 10 lunches for the year. Um, we decided to kind of go that route, so we're basically asking you up front to buy your lunches ahead of time. Um, you'll get those 10 for the year. If you opt not to do that, the membership price is $395 because we understand businesses maybe can't get to 10 lunches throughout the year. Then we're looking at a price of $20 per lunch to be able to come and participate in these networking opportunities. 
So that's what that's what's proposed at this point. So if you have ten lunches, you buy them at the beginning of the year, and you use five up, you use all ten of them up within the first five months. You can buy another pack of ten at the reduced price of fifteen dollars. So basically, we're selling the lunches as, as a ten pack for fifteen dollars a piece. Um, or if you know that hey, it can only come to a few at a time, and you know, maybe a couple during the year, it's twenty bucks to come here, so you're not having out that. Um, so those are that's basically the, essentially the membership pricing that we're looking at. I know there's some sponsorship opportunities and more information will be coming out about that. So not a huge increase in the base membership price, but we're also giving, as I said, we're giving the option for basically another 50 bucks more, you're getting 10 meals, 10 of these lunch opportunities for the whole year. Um, and I think the plan is to continue to do at least 10 lunches with the option of two other things where maybe it could be like where we take a tour to go to a winery or some other aspects to sort of get away from here and sort of have more of a social sort of networking environment as opposed to sort of a presentation type of thing like this. So that we're, again, trying to really create those social spaces, those social opportunities, just to get to know your other fellow businesses within the community. So those other two are things that the board has kind of got in its back pocket that, hey, you know, December's almost here, it's almost the holiday season, let's have one in December and let's go somewhere and do something fun, whether it's locally or we go back to a winery or something like that, so. Um, what about the nonprofits? I believe they were 195 last year versus 295 for businesses. Yep. So every, everything was is was 395. Okay. Thank you. So with that, I guess we got Frank, Clint, myself, any other board members. This is certainly an opportunity to ask questions, provide any comments. Um, you know, again, there's been a lot of effort to put into this to sort of be here today to sort of share this information and hopefully you heard things that align with what you as business owners and as members would really like to see from the chamber and from each other going forward as well, so. You still have a list of all the businesses that used to be members. If you could reach out to them and yep. maybe you could offer them uh, a retro price for the first year and get back in or something. So we did contact some of our past members and we let them join the last quarter for a redu reduced price. Also starting December 1st, we've sent, already sent out emails um, asking the past to join, or anyone, join in 23 for 23. So if they join in December for $23, then they would go on to hopefully renew them in, in, in January. Yep. Thank you. Well, we heard at the October luncheon that people need to see value in this membership and what that does. And that's, that's what we're trying to do, articulate what the chamber is doing and what spaces that we're trying to create or we're trying to do promotional businesses uh, and something like this in, in, in the luncheon. So you see the value of the membership costs. And it, we have little options, little options in there. So we don't have this whole gamut of member ABC to XYZ. You know, we, we're really shrinking it down to keep that consistent inside of our community too. But we heard we need to know value, what the value is, so you're willing to make the investment in we're nowhere in budget season right now, uh, too, because we're planning for 24 right now and, and getting that budget set. And might I add, if it's okay, um, we're going to come together as a board to talk about the sponsors and packages. So it'll be kind of similar to what it was this year, gold, silver, bronze, silver, gold, bronze, uh, platinum. <laughs> but we really want to pack those sponsorships so that you're getting the most value for your buck, too. So not only are you helping the chamber, but you're going to actually get things in there that's going to help your business and not just kind of fill it with one. <coughs> So, Melissa, if, if I'm hearing you, is that the hundred dollar increase from what we're paying now in membership is going to be added benefit or added value that you're going to be sending out, showing us? Words? Yep. So you can um, purchase your renewal your membership for the three ninety five or four forty five, and then you get a basic membership, um, which is kind of what you're all enjoying right now. Then you have the opportunity to add on sponsorship packages that will include that membership and lunches and then give you more, more opportunities to market, more opportunities to sponsor like our website, um, have an ad on there. And if you've been watching your emails, I've been updating the, um, at the towards the bottom, the analytics of how many people come on our website and click on different things. So your packages will be filled with other ways to get your name out there um, in a variety of different ways, digital, print, events. So the packages will include your membership and then give you more. Would I answer your question? What, what else can I help you with? Well, okay, so the, the cost, the added cost, $100 extra per year, what's that going to get us that we're not getting currently right now? 
or is that just reflective on the cost of doing business? Cost of doing business. And I would say they need a little too much faith. Give us a little faith here that you like to see the effort that's going that helps us change what the future is going to be. And it is a little bit of faith um, that, that you're putting into that increase. Mm -hmm. I just want to say with the nonprofits, that $200 rate or $200 difference versus a hundred dollar difference. Did you guys take that into consideration at all with the new budget? We did. Okay. Yeah. Um, again, it's cost of doing business. Ken talked a little bit about a slow roll and a fast roll and and we just feel like we need to get to where we want to be. We just have to increase that. Um, I also am a part of a national chamber group um, for the whole country, and very little chamber of commerce has have a, a nonprofit price versus a um, regular price, and so we just kind of thought about that too. We're just kind of doing what the whole national nation is doing. Mm -hmm. um, so I was just looking at the budget, like. volunteers that we need to. We yeah. can't run bigger events. Um, the golf tournament was only run by a few people. The Fall Harvest Festival was only run by a few people and it really taxed our energy and our resources. So do we want e lots of events? Then we'll need lots of volunteers. Or do we do a couple events and get a lot of bang for our buck? Um, and then we don't need as tight as many volunteers. You know? So we have to kind of find that balance of what you guys want, what you find value in, and then what we're able to do. The slow roll is going to take lots of volunteers. It will. So I think, so if I can just answer the question, one of the things that um, is not reflected in here is if the personnel line was a full-time person, that's significantly higher, that becomes a negative on the bottom, which then affects other aspects of revenue, whether that's more sponsorships, higher membership fees. So I agree, having more events that members can participate, you know, maybe there's intimate, more intimate, like member-to-member -member events, but like what are some of the larger community events? I mean, I think you are in our state table. I would love to see a community golf tournament. And I know there's been some conversations about other type of community sort of um, plated meal dinners and other things like that that maybe bring the community together. I think some of those things we can get to, but we're gonna have to have the staff support to help support the streets. Afterwards, you can contact any one of the board members, and we would be very happy to answer you. Because sometimes it takes a little bit to think about your question. Okay, can I have five more minutes of you guys' time? <laughs> um, I just want to make sure that we have everybody. So we we introduced everyone um, who was new to our um, luncheon today, and so if you wouldn't mind standing up, just letting us know who you are and your exciting news, we'd love to hear from you. <laughs> My name is Deb so um, a lot of people know me as D. Um, my husband and I own a school assisted living facility in North Ranch, um, that way, uh, <coughs> or whatever. Um, Brass <laughs> Cave, it, used to, it was in the community for over 20 years. Uh, we took it over in March of 2021 um, and moved up to the North Ranch. Um, and we are also the family that still 
time, and I know Pat was dying to give his community update. <laughs> <laughs> just, I don't want to skip that, because I just, if I can just jump ahead of you. Hey, whatever. <laughs> so as I mentioned, so the city was at this Midcar Expo, it's with real estate agents, brokers, developers, really trying to get the word out. Um, I brought some brochures that we, that we put together and uh, printed out and handed out. Um, we put together, and, we, and John at Post Haste helped us put these together, and then um, if you'd like a 